everyone it's Denise and welcome back today I thought I would do a two page spread painting here in one of my artisanal journals um, this is the one that's lays flat when we open it up and I've got a couple paintings in here that I've already done um, and this one has pastel on it and because that has the pastel on it and even though I sprayed it um, I have decided to kind of protect it with a piece of deli paper um, so that it doesn't just squish all over each other uh, but I don't have to do that I mean the color mixing in on the other piece might might even be pretty um, so it might not even matter if that color transfers because they're both basically the same size but for the moment I have the deli paper on it and then today I thought I'd do a two page spread maybe something kind of organic-y maybe something botanical in there I don't know we'll see so I've started off I'm still kind of looking in this Ivy Newport Color Flow Volume 1 book um, I've decided this is just a great opportunity to use these little books that I haven't ever really used um, since I've been hooked on the color cube for so long um, and then I'm like I should pull these out too because I actually had these much longer than that <laughs> and the colors are really nice and muted and beautiful and I thought okay I'm going to start off with the Kiritake colors and I have the 48 pan set and the Art Nouveau set that I've pulled these out of and I have pulled number 20 black and I have pulled 54 olive green and I've pulled 44 yellow ochre and I've pulled 19 Potter's Pink and 16 Ecru Beige and I think that gets us close enough. My goal is not to be exact, it's just to lead me in a direction and just see where we can go with that and I'm being inspired by page 74 here. Um, so let's just set that to the side and we'll know what our inspiration is. I'm going to wet these down with some water and get them activated really good and I plan on using quite a bit of paint so quite a bit of water works good and I'm almost thinking that maybe maybe a bigger brush see I got the I like the zero Raphael zero soft aqua but uh, this is a bigger page oh let's use the number two a little bit bigger because I want to swish the color around I want to get it kind of doing stuff maybe I don't normally do um, there are one or two spots on the paper which I'm sure I put there myself as I was hovering over the paper with other materials doesn't really matter I don't think we'll see them at the end but I'm just gonna use my little kneaded eraser to see if there's any that we could make go away there we go so that's why I love having these little erasers if you get anything on there you can make it go away <laughs> mostly this uh, book was made of I think the Canson heritage paper um, but I also like the Hanamule paper so this is the nicer watercolor paper um, and I like working in these and I'm kind of thinking let's start with this Potter's pink and what I like about this paper too is it's a front this is the back of the page and this is the front of a page the texture is a little bit different and I decided I really like that and now that I've got this going I think I'm gonna pull out my three-quarter inch Robert Hayes uh, flat brush cuz um, I kind of like that I could get some other texture and line with this brush so let's do that let's play with a different brush as we're going to and get this to kind of do some stuff and just kind of do a little different painting than hopefully I'm than I normally do I I like to switch it up and get creative and not always do the same thing all right I like that I'm dripping water let me not drip the water all over the place just pulling this other one out of the water I'll get a little brush holder out here to kind of hold that up how about that and 
And I'm trying to be, you know, a little freer, a little more organic. That's why I hold the brushes way back at the back. It doesn't have to be, you know, held up tight. And I feel like if I'm holding it up tight near the, near the ferrule of the brush, then I get real tight and I don't get as creative with my brush lines and stuff because I'm real tight up, up to the top there. And if you get further back, you give yourself a little more space to do other things. And I'm not thinking too hard about where we're going here. I'm just filling the page with our colors and just seeing like where are we gonna end up. I was a little bit afraid of the green because I really liked the orange and the yellow and I thought, do I want to add this? But oh, now that I got it on there, I'm like, okay, I'm glad I did that. I do actually like the green. Oh, so I could put black or I could save the black for some mark making on top. What do you guys think? Are you filling it? Do I need to do some black paint or black mark making? That's kind of cool. I like what that's got going on there. And I could have put some cardboard or some salt down to really get some texture in there too. I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to go for that right there. So I think I'm going to let this dry for a moment and think about it and let it kind of simmer in my mind and come back and do some mark making. So I will be right back. All right, I've let that dry. And I think I want to play with a little bit of acrylic paint on top of here. Maybe do an abstract floral background possibly. So I have pulled some colors. Move those out of the way. I pulled some colors um, that are kind of in the same color palette. Still trying to stick to a similar color palette. And what I think I'm going to do, and I've pulled out Blick Matte Acrylics, this orange medium orange light blue green light yellow ochre yellow orange medium red medium i've pulled out some black because i still have not put black in here because remember on our color palette we did have black so i don't know we're gonna see um i don't always do exactly everything in there but at the same time i do try to mostly uh, get stuff to do their thing and so in these Sean Petit uh, stencils I really love this Moroccan tile and I love these flower ones um, and this one is flowing leaves five by eight flowing flowers and then the flowers have a little mask that I saw a video that Sean did and she painted uh, acrylic paint on the flower and then stamped it down like a stamp so I'm kind of thinking that might be what I want to do um so I, I i'm almost considering this first because i'm thinking it could be like patio tile like this could be our garden and this could be like some slight patio tile look i don't know if you've ever seen those patio blocks and i've got a stencil that looks like those blocks um, but i want to use this kind of moroccan feel instead and I'm almost thinking, what do we want to do? Do we want to do a slight pink? Oh, I'm almost feeling slight pink now that I'm saying that. Let's just, and I just want it to be something light and implied on top. Like we're peeking through the garden and we can see that slight patio block feel. I don't want it to be something that's super obvious. I want it to be light. And this is coming out exactly as I was thinking. I like that just slight extra layer in there. And I'm trying to keep the paint real thin on my sponge. I don't want it to be real goopy or anything. And the sponge, sponge is dry. So thin layer of paint, dry sponge. That's kind of the feel I'm going for. 
oh look it's just very slight that's exactly what I wanted and so now I'm kind of thinking kind of thinking we could do like some of the leaves could be just kind of in here a little bit maybe over here we could do those in black as I push this in the paint hang on that's how I get paint everywhere exactly that right there <laughs> let's get this over a tiny bit now I could do those in black that could be my slight black because in this layout over here that I did um, that black is really striking and lovely could do uh could do I don't know let's see I could do some black line drawings on underneath there too let's just do it and again I'm trying to do real thin on the paint I don't want it to be goopy or sliding up under the stencil all right I'm scared <laughs> okay I like that we'll leave that let's move this right here and do a few more okay I'm good with that I was I was definitely scared because <laughs> you know now I'm working on a book I'm just like you I don't want to ruin it <laughs> oh okay that I like that a lot actually okay now I'm feeling good let's put this over here liking it oh that's lovely now do we want some coming down we just want to leave it like that <laughs> we could add some black dots in I'm feeling pretty good about that though could add one right here come back that way really inspired on that other page by that line of floral stuff there at the bottom so I'm feeling pretty good about this line of floral stuff so maybe we'll do that one right there and again real thin paint real dry brush that way we don't end up with a whole bunch of paint underneath the stencil Oh, look at that. Okay. Whoa, now I'm feeling good about that. All right, let's set that down. And I'm kind of thinking, okay, so the what, what Sean had done, I believe, it's been a while since I watched that video, but I'll definitely link it for you, was she took a little bit of whatever colors that she was thinking and painted those on here. Um, and these almost kind of have like a little peony, uh, pe I mean a pansy kind of look to it, like so not all one color. Um, and I like that kind of pansy-esque kind of feel, so I'm kind of thinking, kind of thinking that's what we should do. A little pansy look in here, and we'll just see. Okay, I'm scared. <laughs> Let's just, oh, I did it, I did it. <laughs> And we'll kind of let that press down and on the back of that little mask I have put a piece of tape and kind of made it into a stamp because that's what I think Sean was doing she had a little piece of tape or something and it allowed her to stick to the back of that and then you got a little handhold okay let's pick it up oh <laughs> messier than I was thinking but still quite a lovely let's just do some more of these this is abstract flowers it's not meant to be perfectly painted um, so that's kind of where I'm thinking on these and so I like that kind of beat up flower not perfect kind of look there oh that one's better <laughs> all right so I'm gonna definitely I'll link that video below for what she had done it was just so inspiring it randomly popped up on my YouTube feed and then I saw her line of stencils and they were just so delightful and a little different than 
the stencils that I've found in other places. Um, so it was nice having another choice for lovely stencils. And a fun thing to kind of experiment with. New technique to play in. I like that. And it's probably not as perfect as hers, but still gets what I want done. I'm happy with it. Oh, it's like a little garden down here. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, what else do we want to do? Are we kind of happy with that garden? I feel like I need some other pieces. So I'm just going to swipe the paint off of that one. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I don't want it to be real thick and goopy. I could do a couple smaller ones out here, and then maybe we could do some dots or something. Could do some little... Oh, okay, hang on. Let's do some more of these. Hang on here. There we go. Just trying to get it close enough. And not too much paint seems to work a little better than super goopy, so just FYI as I'm going here. And multiple colors on it looks really pretty. So just throwing this in there with the other flowers. Okay, I like it. Good deal. Let me just swipe that off of there so I don't have thick paint left all over it. And then kind of thinking you know we could come back in here and add some more let me get my little round brush so this is let's see I was using a filbert brush there for that acrylic paint you know people ask me do I use the same brushes for watercolor and acrylic but I do notice that I pull out these um, stiffer brushes for my acrylic paints I don't always do watercolor brushes. I do seem to have a little separation. So this is the uh, half inch Princeton Umbria Filbert that I was using. And then I could come back in here with say a little round Princeton round number six and we could just kind of come back in here with some dots of color. I could do that with Posca pen. I don't have to do it with paint. Uh, but we can just make it look like, you know, little things that are about to bloom, but maybe haven't bloomed yet. That's super fun. Now I kind of feel like this was like a little field and it was growing up and I like it. I'm going to do some dots, I think. Got some white Posca. Just because just cause I want to. Nothing, no real reason there other than I want to.
I could do colored dots too. I like the white. I could do some colored just in here. Add a little whimsy around the flowers kind of thing. Ooh, I like it. All right, and then I could I could keep going, but I'm kind of feeling like that's pretty cool and springy, and I like how our little flowers here at the bottom are doing something fun. Could add a few more of those up there. Kind of just depends on how far you want to go and how much you want to play. Um, but I'm kind of feeling like I might be there for today. Um, a lot of times I'll stop and I'll think about pieces and maybe later I'll come back and add to them but I kind of feel like um, we did really well here with our color palette and it got us along the direction of being inspired to paint a flower garden kind of thing. And I think for today I'm going to say that this one is good for today and I may revisit it later. If I do I'll, I'll bring you along on that but I feel like for today's abstract piece in our book I'm good with that. Hope you enjoyed painting with me today and checking out some of these techniques and I'll see you guys next time. <music>